interpretation of the scripture and not the tradition of men. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. I was fortunate two times in my life to have heard W.A. Criswell. Once at Highview Baptist in Louisville and the other time First Baptist in um, Dallas, Texas. I have several of his books. <clears throat> and uh, he said, I saw a pathetic picture in Life Magazine. A little boy had uh, been lost in a horizon to horizon uh, Kansas field of wheat. And he had wandered away from his house and had lost his way in a vast sea of standing stalks. Frantically, the parents had searched for the child, but to no avail. <clears throat> the sympathizing neighbors helped, but without success. Finally, someone su suggested that they join hands and comb the field by section. And the picture I saw, W.A. Criswell said, is the sorrow of neighbors with the family standing over the dead body of the little boy and the cry of the father printed as a caption below. Oh, if only we had joined hands before. Several years ago, I heard on the radio I can't remember which one, but it was Weird Beard. Anybody ever hear him? He was a disc jockey. And anyway, there was a, a kid, a two-year-old kid, that wandered close to those big um, cisterns of, of water. It's, it's just fields of water. that uh, They sent the water to all of Louisville. This boy was missing. And they searched those ponds, humongous amount of water in them, searching. They knew he was in there. That would break a parent's heart, wouldn't it? And so they did the same thing. This was back in um, uh, the 50s, 60s. They joined hands and walked across that muddy uh, lake. It was only about four or five feet high. And they stepped on a, that child. He had drowned it in that water. If only they'd have joined hands a little bit sooner. And listen, we've got to do the same thing. If we're going to do anything for this city to win anybody, we've got to join hands, put our heads together, not balk. You know, a, a horse can buck in the, in the harness. Amen? And instead of going forward, they back up. God help us as Christians. We would join together and, and uh, do uh, work for God. <clears throat> when a large uh, religious service was being conducted at the Golden Gate Exposition in San Francisco, many people quickly became aware that the minister delivering the main address was not thoroughly orthodox. Although a gifted speaker, he began to direct most of his eloquence against the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Ruth Martison related that when his fluent or orator <clears throat> ended, a timid el el elderly, that's my throat, Lady stood up in the midst of the crowd and softly began to sing a hymn by William Cooper. As touching a rebuke to the modernist remarks of people today, and a hush fell over the assembly of people was there. And she sang, There is still a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinners plunge beneath that flow, lose all their guilty stains. And before she could begin the second stanza, approximately a hundred more people joined her. 
And by the time they reached the third stanza, nearly a thousand, a thousand Christians all over the auditorium were singing the blessed song. The triumph uh, was thrilling to people as they joined in, in essence, and saying, dear, dear lamb, dying lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power Amen. till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. Amen. Many were deeply moved as they humbled believers stood up for her and with the light of heaven upon her face gave testimony that she had found peace through the cross and through the blood that was shed. Amen? We live in a sad hour. We live in a sad hour because, you know, in the Old Testament it says in the book of Zechariah, can't give you the verse, but it says that Jesus was wounded in the house of his friends. Now, the Jews were more than friends. I think that shoots right at us at Christianity over the United States where he is getting the worst wounds today is in the house of people that call themselves Christians. Amen. Wouldn't bear many amens to that. But it's true. <clears throat> Amen. Man doesn't need the blood in order to be saved. That's what the lady said. I want to tell you the Bible says, hey, let's get back to it. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. When mainline denominations have uh, moved to proclaim a social gospel instead of a gospel proclaiming salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ, there's something wrong with Christianity. When main denominationals, <laughs> amen, when they write commentaries and won't use the word blood in it, Jesus shed his blood. Amen. Some have even gone so far as to remove song, songs dealing with the blood from their modernistic liberal hymns. Listen to this uh, quote from a theologian named Williams, last name. I don't think we need a, a theology of atonement at all. I don't think we need folks hanging on the crosses and blood dripping and weird stuff like that. Ah, uh, that's wrong. That's totally wrong. If we don't sing the hymns about blood, if we don't preach about the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no remission for sin, I tell you that. I'm afraid it doesn't, doesn't much matter what uh, Williams or others had to say about it. You see, just as body emptied of blood becomes a corpse. Jesus was nailed to a cross. For me, drove nails right here and pulled up into the middle of his, his oh, in, in his feet. Somebody said, what did he do with that blood? I believe God caught every drop of it. You say, where do you find that in the Bible? You, you don't find it in the Bible, but I'm, I'm just telling you, we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, somebody said, I, I just don't believe that. Well, I'm going to tell you, you will someday. You see, just as the body without uh, empty of the blood becomes a corpse, so faith devoid of the cleansing of the blood of Jesus Christ is a corpse, a dead corpse. The blood is the bedrock of our faith and practice and the local church, the Bible. Amen. 
is the gospel of our faith. And apart from that, there is no salvation. I want to tell you that. But thanks be unto God, the blood still has its power. You can trust it. Others may flee from the truth of the gospel of salvation, but I will cling to the old rugged cross. Religions may decry it and, and call it out and say it, it's nothing to it. It's repulsive to some people. And they call us barbarians. Now they, they pointed the finger at the wrong people. Right. Amen? Amen? Robert Loring got it right when he penned that old song, Nothing But the Blood. And so this morning I'm going to preach about, uh, for a little while, nothing but the blood. If you have never trusted Christ in his saving faith, this message is designed for you. Amen. If you are saved, then this message will serve as an encouragement and reminder of what process Jesus went through in order to get salvation to us. Yeah, when he was on the cross, God turned his back on his son. As he died for the sins of the world, he died in our stead. He took my place. He was righteous. And every one of us here today, amen, we deserved it. We deserve the cross. We deserve to die, but he died in our stead. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Notice, notice with me what only, what, what only the blood can do for you. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood can, number one, produce a Savior. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Amen. He was with the Father back in eternity. He was born in Bethlehem's manger. Oh, you could hear him cry. You could see him. His, his life was dependent upon his mom. Amen. I want to tell you, this is, this is a powerful message as far as I'm concerned. He was foreordained before the foundation of the world. You thought he was born in Bethlehem's manger. I'm telling you, he was foreordained way back yonder. In the beginning of time, he said, let us. Who was he talking to? Amen. According to this verse, Jesus was foreordained before the world was ever created to become the sacrifice for sin. Revelations 13 and verse 8, it says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life and the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He accomplished many things during his walk on earth. God become flesh. Jesus fulfilled many of the Old Testament laws. A virgin will conceive and bring forth a son. In the book of Isaiah, 700 years before Christ came, but he fulfilled those prophecies. It was told that he'd be born in Bethlehem. Micah chapter 5 and verse 2. He'd be the seed of David. Jeremiah 23 and 5. He would be a man of sorrow. Isaiah 53 and 3. Don't try to catch up with all these because I'm, I'm going too fast. Got Got a long ways to go. A man of co compassion, Isaiah 42 and verse 3. And many miracles stretch out to fallen man. Amen. Jesus lived a sinless life. Jesus taught a better way to live. Jesus zealously defended the truth of God. Amen. He cleansed the temple. He was always doing what was right. There was no guile found in his mouth. He was born, amen, sinless. And he died sinless. 
Brother Mark, take our sins away. Mm. You think you could jump and run? No, I don't believe you can today, but maybe next week. <laughs> However, Jesus never began, became the actual Savior of men until he climbed Calvary's hill to the cross and shed his precious blood for us. Amen. Amen. It isn't the life of Christ or his teaching that saves the soul. It is his blood. And that alone. Amen. Hebrews 9, 22 uh, is, is a good verse right there. You know, hey, if you have an NIV Bible, throw that sucker away. What, what's it take? It attacks the blood of Jesus Christ. I like the old-fashioned King James Bible. It doesn't distort it. It's there for you. You can get saved through it. <clears throat> Jesus never became the actual Savior of men until he climbed Calvary's cross. And by his death, he became our Savior. John 15 and verse 13. Greater love had no man than a man would lay down his life for his uh, friends. Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, number two, can purchase the sinner. If you're saved, it's by the blood. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18 for as much as you know you were not uh, redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold. Oh, we'd like to have a little bit more, wouldn't we? I'll trade billfolds. Is there anybody here to trade billfolds with me? Is there anybody here? Wait, nope, it's too late. <laughs> <coughs> I know what he's doing now. I thought he was reaching for his billfold. <laughs> There's some corruptible things. From your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers. Oh, but those, those don't re redeem. But with the precious blood Amen. of Christ Amen. as a lamb. Without blemish. And without spot. Oh, listen, I'm getting close to 81. Coming up right away. Are, are you close to that? Well, bless your pea picking heart. <laughs> Get up here and give me a handshake. 80? 83. Whoo! 81. One of these days we're going to see Jesus. You're saved, aren't you? Amen. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So it's a blood that purchases uh, the sinner. Redeemed and not redeemed with corruptible things and silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood. Of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Amen. It declares, verse 18 declares us that we are have been redeemed through the blood. This word means to liberate by payment of a ransom. Hallelujah. 19, 1965, I believe that's when it was. I was liberated. I was liberated with a payment. What was it? It was the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. It was a ransom. Sin needed redemption. Oh, man, you'd have got into this thing if you'd been here just a little bit earlier. <laughs> Sinners... 
are slaves to sin. They are lost and separated from God. They're hell bound and hopeless apart from Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you, if, you're, if you are lost, you get up and come up here right now. We'll get somebody to pray with you. Yeah, you'll do it, won't you, Charlie? Mitch, you'll do it? Yeah, you better say yes. <laughs> Christ's blood offers the redemption that sinners need. The blood frees us from sin's power. The blood brings us into fellowship with the Father. The blood gives us peace and assurance. That's enough to make a Presbyterian shout. <clears throat> it changes our, our residence for eternity. Look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we, ha have, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations. Revelation 7 and 9. Uh, of all nations, all kindred, all people, all tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Ooh, is this a palm? Is it okay if I jerk one of them babies off? <laughs> hey, you're having a harder time than me. All right, <laughs> they're over there and they're waving palms in their hands, amen, and they sing a song and they cried with a loud voice saying, salvation to our God, which sat upon the throne and the Lamb. And all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders, four beasts, and before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. And verse 12, saying, amen. All right, back in the back here. Listen, you're not going to be so quiet when we get over there. And here's what they said. They fell down and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto God forever and ever. Amen. Verse 13, that seventh chapter. And one of the elders answered, saying unto him, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? A few years ago, I had a white suit. Janet bought it for me. She thought I'd look prettier if I wore a white suit. <laughs> How many here remember that? Well, some of them are not here now, but they laughed at me so much. I don't think I wore it over two times, did I? I don't think they're going to laugh at me when I get robed up there with my robe. <laughs> Glory be to God. I'm going to shout and praise God. Thank God he saved me. Oh, from the depths of sin, he reached down further than I could reach up. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Verse 13 says, Whence came they? He said, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they that came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white. What did they make them white in? The blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Try anything you will, only blood fits men for heaven. Theologian Emery 
Bancroft wrote some years ago, a parliament of religion was held in Chicago in connection with the World's Fair. At that parliament, the great ethnic face of the world would respond. One by one, the leading men of all religion, Buddhism, Confucian, Hinduism, uh, Islam. Then Dr. Cook of Boston, who had been chosen to represent Christianity, rose to speak. Here is Lady Macbeth, her hands. He said, stained with foul murder of Duncan. She herself, as she promenades through the halls and the corridors of her pal palace home, stopping to cry, out, cursed, spotted, out, I say. Will these hands ever be clean? Then turning to those seated on the platform, and he said, can any of you are so anxious in your religion and your religion system to offer anyone cleansing for the sins of the guilt of Lady Macbeth. And there was silence for a good while. And somebody said, only the blood of Jesus! Anybody can do it, anybody can do it, anybody wants to. It doesn't make any difference who they are or what they are. First John 1 and 5. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses from all sin. Amen, I love that. Those who are saved can sing the song of the redeemed. Redeemed, now my love to proclaim him. That's all I know. <laughs> Did you like it? <laughs> Whew! Nothing but the blood can purify from sin. 1 Peter 1, 22. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the uh, spirit unto unfrightened love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a fervent love. Verse 22 says, it declares that obedience to the truth of God uh, purifies the soul from sin. I love that. Even with all the millions and millions of gallons of blood that was shed for the many years, that the Jewish religion was in operation. They killed lambs and goats and pigeons and sparrows and uh, cows and bulls. On the Passover day, they killed 250,000. The river run red with blood. Amen? <laughs> oh, thank God. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The, the Old Testament, they were only rolled away for a time. Never did get rid of them. But when Jesus died on the cross. That was it. To tell us, die, it is finished. God, God turned his back on his son on the cross. See, here's the cross. I'm not God. But when he cried out, he turned his back, and our sins was laid upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Well, I think that's about as much as I can do. And it's time to, uh, I will, a couple, a couple illustrations that I will share at the close of the service tonight. Amen.
If you're not saved, you need to be saved. If you're not saved, or if you are saved, and you'd like to rededicate your life to God, you get up here and we'll pray the prayer for you. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. As a This message was for you, Jenny.